good afternoon, October the 8th, 2013. This is CISG 114, Section 2, Web Technology and Life. Today is the first day in the fourth week of the semester. My students will be very excited because by the end of this week they have to submit something. And my experience tells me that in this lesson they are going to tell me a lot. So let's start. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, welcome back. Um, I know that you're here to tell me something, and so I'm all right here. So, there's something wrong with this table. Five person, and there's something wrong with this table. <laughs> so let's move it, uh, okay? So uh, I heard the first reactions when I opened the door of the elevators. Sir, confusion. So what's meant by that? So. Uh, I'm going to listen first because we have the first hour and I'm sorry to be late by almost six minutes. So, um, first of all, this is the fourth week of the semester and according to the schedule, it is this Friday, October 11th, that is when you have to submit the learning artifacts for learning contract number one. Learning contract number one covers the first week, second week, third week, and fourth week. Okay? So in this learning contract, number one, we explore inquiry-based learning, and the learning artifact we need to submit improve five items. The first, it's in each of the four weeks, you should have done one journal, which is based on one topic you selected from each week's reading list. Okay? So in the past four weeks, including this week, you should have uh, at least three journals completed. And if you complete the journal for this week, you have four journals, okay? And in order to submit the first artifact in your learning contract number one, you need to select one journal out of the four, okay? In each of the four weeks, okay? And you have to structure your journaling material in the context of OIA, observation, interpretation, and application. Okay? And if you look at the assessment rubric, you know that how we go and give your grade based on that. So this is item number one. The second item is something to do with your peer discussion. Okay? Each one of you has already one partner at this point. So with your learning partner, you are going to complete your peer-based discussion in week number three and also in week number four. So how do you do that? Very simple. Each one of you needs to, in your pair, each one of you in your pair needs to propose one topic for discussion. Now, there's so many topics over the past four weeks you have to pick one topic, be it from the first week, second week, the third week, or the fourth week. That's not that tough. But you have to pick one topic. And once you pick a topic, you have to engage your learning partner to discuss the topic for you so that you have a complete set of OIA. Okay? Base your original set of OIA, which is carried forward from the journal. Okay? And then, you have to help your learning partner to complete his or her set of OIA based on his or her chosen topic. So in your peer discussion forum, you actually have to complete as a pair two discussion topics, one from you, one from your learning partner. And to define a completion of your discussion, you must have done enough to produce a refined set of OIA, observation, interpretations, and application. Let me switch on the air conditioner. It's not yet on. Yes, it's not on yet. All right. So, this is item number two. Now, you have to do the third item, which is a report. Now, how do we come up with a report? From two persons' perspective, you have done two topic discussion, okay? Now, earlier in the second item, when you have to submit your discussion detail, you have to submit the discussion detail related to your chosen topic, 
not your partner's chosen topic. Okay? So you need to sort out from the discussion forum related discussion detail related to your chosen topic. Now, in the report, it's different because each pair must have done the discussions of two topics. So in your report, you must have the details for two topics. So for topic one, you have one set of OIA. For topic two, you have another set of OIA. One topic from, come from you, the other topic come from the learning partner. And how do you structure the report? If you look at the teacher's message there, the guidelines is already given. It's very simple, right? So this is the report. Now after the first three items, the reds, it's very simple. The fourth item is that each one of you has to come up with one simple proposal based on your three to four week study in this first learning contract. Now what is meant by proposal? A proposal means after your several weeks of exploration of this topic, you want to study something which is maybe outside the range of the reading list, outside the range of the suggested YouTube video on the UR Moodle side. Now, it could be inside, okay? It could also be outside. So you want to study a specific topic. So your job in the proposal is to name one topic. And you have to give three very simple questions which tells people what you want to do with the topic, okay? Very simple question. And then you have to provide three related references which could support your study about this topic, okay? It could be other references already given in the reading list. It could be a YouTube video already given in the UN Moodle environment. Or it could be both, which is discovered by you through your search in the internet. And then you need to write a very simple introduction paragraph which gives good reasoning why you want to study that topic. Now, the paragraph does not contain more than 200 words, okay? So that is the fourth item. The fifth item is very simple because it contains the discussion, face-to-face -face discussion detail of you and your learning partner concerning how you're going to get the learning contract one done, okay? Just like what I told you, because you have to tell your learning partner which topic you have chosen, how much time you want to do that, and when you want to get it done, okay? And your learning partner might have to tell you the same. And this is what we call meeting details. And in terms of a professional terms, a meeting detail is often called meeting minutes, okay? And in the uh, teacher's message there, I've already given you uh, example meeting details of previous students, okay? And you just have to follow the same template and fill in some of your own detail. Now, these are the five items you have to handle, okay? And these are items you should have learned of at the beginning of the semester because they are already there on the day one of the semester. Now, but my experience tells me most of my students will not pay attention to that until one to two days before the due day, and this is exactly the topic we haven't talked about today on information literacy. So normally, uh, I should be hearing some requests from this class, one class before it's submitted, concerning something like, what I heard from the lady over there, can, can you give us some more days to do it, right? So normally it's possible, but not more than five, or not, not more than five days, because five days is one week, okay? So the, the best is not beyond three days, but the, 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 the last result is not beyond five days. So you have to understand that, okay? So if you look at the submission names that I'm going to give you on Wednesday, that means tomorrow, you will definitely see the last day of the submission. It's actually not Friday. It's five days plus five days. Okay, you see what I'm trying to tell you? Five days plus five days. On five days, 11 plus five days. So it's basically like 16. This is my experience. So you don't need to worry, unless you don't take advantage of that. Oh, 
The only reasons why we were able to we have not covered today's lessons yet. Once we, once we cover today's lessons, you'll understand what I'm trying to tell you. So do you see the meaning of that? So you actually, um, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, you should have enough time to get it done because uh, for me, the first learning contract actually be done in one week. But I have given you four weeks as one great week. You see that? So do you see the meaning of that? This is, all, this is one way I want you to learn to manage yourself when you step into uh, what we call mixed with itself way related learning. Okay? Self-regulated learning is one approach which is built on inquiry-based learning with a very specific theme called self-management and also the management of the work as well as the goals. Okay? So I think I have put off some of you worry, but now that you know that you have some more time, don't waste it. Okay? Use it effectively. Is it okay? Uh, Alright? Have you read my teacher's message? All right, now let me give you some very interesting thing. This is also my experience. Let me show you. This is the questionnaire I invite you to do now, sweet. Look at that. How many students do we have in this class? About 25 or 20 something. Okay, so who has not done this? Who has not? Okay. Right? If you have not done this, it, make sure you do it. I get, uh, I'll give you some more hours today before 6 o'clock, okay? Because it's very important for you. It's your decision who's going to tell me if you want to have the final exam. Okay, have you done that? Yes. yes. Because if you don't say anything, I cannot do anything, right? So the next thing I have to do, let me just show you something, all right? This is very important. So far, I have 17 students who have done it. And if you look at the result, most of the students prefer to redistribute 20% in class participation. All right? So that means class participation means you're sharing. Remember that. It's very important. If you know how to grab the chance in each class to share, you already got a lot of points out of the final exam. Do you want to earn the points through class sharing or do you want to earn the points through final exam? This tells me already. Almost 17%, the 17 students who all say they do not want final exam, this is, I know it. And then 15 of you say they want the readers to build 20% in class participation, okay? So this is the way to go. So I expect that you will sign up for next week's sharing, all right? I'm going to issue the side sheet very soon, tomorrow, all right? So you better sign up, it's very important. I want to give each one of you a fair chance to share in class for all the semester so you learn and you grab your points, all right? So, result for that. But those of you who have not done this, make sure you complete the survey before 6 o'clock today, all right? I'm going to set the time again. All right. Let's go back to class. Very important this week. If you look at our schedule, okay? Week number one, week number two, week number three, week number four. This is the week we are going to finish the common module, the last common module for called information literacy and competency. This is something very important. Now, I'm sorry I was late today. I didn't bring uh, enough paper for you, but I hope you got some paper on your phone so that you can write on. Now, I'm going to give you a very soft video, and then you try to get the idea of information literacy. Basically, this is what exactly you need, okay, in order to accomplish any major assignment, not just in this GE course, but in any university course you are going to study in the four years, information literacy, all right? It's concerned with your ability to look up information based on your need, okay? And then it's your ability to access those information based on your need. 
and it's your ability to evaluate those information based on your need. And it's your ability to use them based on your need. And at the end of that, give credit to your source. All right? So get ready. Let's get started. And remember, we have a reading list for week number four. Okay? You have to select your discussion topic from those reading lists per week. So, are you ready? Go. Information literacy, sometimes called information fluency, focuses on an individual's relationship with the information available to them in their daily life. Information is abundant and in more format than most people can utilize. And at some point, we all suffer from information overload. Information literacy is critical in allowing individuals to skillfully and knowledgeably take advantage of this new environment in their personal, academic, and professional lives. In this tutorial, the basic concepts of information literacy will be explored, especially as they pertain to students in higher education. The term information literacy was coined in 1974 by Paul Zerkowski, who noted that those who were information literate were able to mold information sources in order to find solutions to problems. Fifteen years later, a definition was created that is still in use by many educators and academic organizations today. The ALA's Presidential Committee on Information Literacy distinguished those qualities that make one information literate, stating that a person must be able to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use effectively the needed information. Information literacy applies to everyone, both inside and outside academia. It's about learning the skills to understand and navigate this new information world encountered on a daily basis. If one can utilize these skills and effectively use information, they have fulfilled the primary goal of becoming lifelong learners. Those who have learned how to learn, who can always find the information needed for any task or decision at hand. Although it applies to everyone, information literacy will vary according to the individual. An undergrad will use very different skills from someone already in a career or those skills used in one's personal life. We will look briefly at information literacy as it pertains to higher education. In 2000, the Association of College and Research Libraries developed a set of five standards, performance indicators, and outcomes to define the information literate student. These standards touch upon five major components of information literacy, need, access, evaluation, use, and ethics. The first standard focuses on determining the need for information and recognizing what types and how much information are required. This includes being able to define the need, such as in a thesis statement. It's knowing what resources are available for the particular subject and choosing those that will be the most effective. This standard discusses recognizing the feasibility of conducting certain research while also coordinating a realistic timeline. The student should be willing to reevaluate and clarify their information needs throughout this process. The second standard focuses on accessing information. It may seem that students would be adept at this because of the abundance of information and easy to use search tools. However, this standard is really about getting the best information and not necessarily the most or fastest. Students must be aware of the research methods used in the particular subject field. They need to apply effective search strategies within appropriate tools to then access this information. Although there are always exceptions, it is important for them to try to use a variety of methods and systems instead of relying on a single research tool like Google. And they must be willing to refine their search strategies as needed. Finally, it is crucial that once found, students can manage these resources, being able to extract and organize the pertinent material so that it can be easily accessed while working on their final product. The third standard focuses on two types of evaluation. First, students need to evaluate sources to make sure they are legitimate and authoritative, especially in an environment where creating and distributing information can be done by practically anyone. It's also critical that students recognize bias, prejudice, deception, and manipulation within sources. Second, students need to evaluate the information within their source. This requires them to be able to understand the material, extract the main ideas, and know what parts would be best utilized in the final product. They should be able to take this information and synthesize it into their new ideas and concepts that can then be compared to prior knowledge, allowing them to test their ideas and theories. It is also important for students to investigate different viewpoints. They need to be willing to discuss their findings and research with other individuals and practitioners. 
Finally, based on the information gathered, students need to evaluate their strategies to determine if modifications will be required to get better or more applicable resources. Standard 4 is about using this newly evaluated information to create a product such as a research paper. In general, this standard focuses on being able to cohesively and adeptly incorporate and utilize the new and prior information and effectively present it in a way that is understandable and clearly supports the main thesis. Finally, according to Standard 5, students need to be aware of the ethics of information. This does not mean students simply need to cite their sources to avoid plagiarism, although this is an important point. Students need to be aware of topics that can affect their research and daily life, such as privacy and security, copyright, intellectual freedom, fair use, censorship, and the freedom of speech. They must understand and follow the laws and regulations surrounding information. They then need to acknowledge information sources using appropriate documentation style and citing accurately and as needed. These standards may seem overwhelming to incorporate into a single course. However, the development of an information literate student takes place over their entire academic career and will continue long after. It's up to the instructor to decide what standards apply and should be taught within their course. Eventually, all the standards will come together. The information literate student is not the creation of any single individual. He or she has been molded by a wide variety of people, including professors and librarians. Please consult the Rice Library Information Literacy Lib Guide. This guide will provide you with a full list of ACRL standards, performance indicators, and outcomes with corresponding sample activities. It also provides additional links and resources to make understanding and incorporating IELTS skills easier. Please ask the reference librarians at Rice Library about what you can do to make information literacy a more prevalent part of your classes. Thank you very much for listening. I would like to suggest that one of you go to that table to make a table of three persons, and I'll leave the other table with the third table of three persons, then it will be much more even. Okay? Can you? Yes. Because we don't want to leave the two tables with two persons there. Now, you have heard why you know, the person's going to be on the table. You have heard this particular video on information literacy. Let me just relate this video to what you're supposed to do in your journal. Normally, when you write the journal for the topic you chose after reading this, okay, you have to ask this question. Can I have more information to support what is given in that piece that is given to us by a teacher? Can I find at least three out of related references so as to convince us we have more information to evaluate? Okay? So you have a need to wordify something, particularly in the intellect, you don't trust its face value, okay? You need to have this habit to cultivate a mind of inquiry where not it is valid. So you have a need to wordify. The second thing is you must have the access to all the information in the internet when you use a search engine and in Google, not only give you a bunch of entries could be useful, but you have to tell by your experience whether they are really related. So you need to learn how to exercise evaluation based on what is a criteria. What criteria? You need to define your criteria. For example, if you've chosen a topic to write your journal, basically whatever you write in your journal, as long as you sort it into OIA, you've got the points already. In terms of journal, you look at the assessment criteria. We are asking for, have you come up with enough references to support your low taking there? Okay, information capture there. Have you given some thought into it? How do you get a four instead of get a one? One means beginning, two means developing, three means accomplish, four means excellent. So everybody would like to get four points instead of one point, but how do you get it? Just look at what is required, all right? So you need to provide at least three more relevant references. Relevant is very important, all right? The most important thing is after you have grabbed those information, the ethic issues of that particular video tells you you must give credit to your source. That's what you need to learn, all right? Normally, now we're going to start out a very interesting IL study topic. Follow it now. 
this is in your situations. You know that you have assignment to submit, okay, starting this Friday, and you should have submitted on Friday, but you don't. The teachers give you grace period to do it five days later at most. Now you have a need to accomplish something. And we call this, say, a project or work to do. Now with this work to do, you have to exercise your knowledge in information literacy to do it. So now how do you get started, all right? Watch. Give me what what. I gotta know what it is before I can go ask someone else about it or to find out about it. Just makes sense. Wikipedia is awesome. It's got good English, no fluff, it's written like I can understand it. Gives me links to other stuff too. It's just the real stuff I need. Sometimes when I get to the series research, I think back and say, hmm, I thought Wikipedia said this though. But this source is disclaiming it here. That's what it's interesting for me. Yeah, not that Wikipedia gives any real surefire evidence. Just makes me feel more comfortable, confident, ready to go on. Wikipedia is my first go to place, but certainly not my last. encyclopedia that has been put in place for more than 10 years, 15 years. When it was first launched, people doubt whether or not this is some reliable source. So most of the professors would say, watch, I don't want you to go to Wikipedia to look at your information. I want you to give me some more credible sources. Because the model of Wikipedia, even today, it's questionable, people say, but interestingly speaking, it's becoming increasingly credible. But even the, a lot of the scholars at the university will say, don't go to the Wikipedia. 
as long as you credit the source. One important criteria Wikipedia requires you to do when you put information there is it's something that has already been published with a reliable source. Do you see the meaning of that? Wikipedia will not allow you to put there in the Wikipedia any related information without a credible source. So whatever it is in the Wikipedia today, we know that it is traceable to some established source. So today, most of the college professors will say, if you want to learn anything, go to the Wikipedia. But this was not the same picture 15, 10 years ago. Okay? So today, Wikipedia is very important, and you need to learn how to sign the source. And this is very important, the message I want to take. Why do I have to emphasize this? Because remember, when you do your discussions with your peer member, you need to help him or her discover at least three related references that are useful to support his or her topic discussion. So now we're going to Wikipedia. All right, so this is the first step. Now let's go to the second step. The key term is, aha. What does it mean to be a student in the digital age? What students say about procrastination? Do I procrastinate? Sure. Sometimes I just get too overloaded with too much information coming at me. Learn this, write this, turn this in. I don't mean to wait until the last minute, but I work two different jobs and have so little time. I know I can always find something online, even at the last minute. I can't always be studying. I mean, college is about having some fun, even if it's only a little bit of this. At 2 a.m. the night before it's due, when I've got all the stuff I need and I start writing like crazy, it just comes to me. That's when I'm creative. Maybe I'll see something on the bus, a billboard, a newspaper, a book someone's read, and it gives me an idea for my paper. With all the work from other classes, I just prioritize what to do from week to week and go from there. I wait and I wait for the professor to say something. Give me some more guidance about what they expect. Sometimes I delay working on school stuff because, well, I'm just feeling lazy. Just too tired to do much of anything. Period. Remember, in this class, I designed uh, learning contract number one to cover actually three up few weeks, but I also include the first week, and this is the last week. And you see the the urgency of students feeling about the need to submit something this week is very high because you know Friday is coming, and uh, you cannot procrastinate anymore because there is a need for you to do it. And traditionally speaking, students are very much urged by this submission need because that is where the scores are supposed to be earned. If you fail to do that, you, you will not be able to have a chance to earn the score. So you know that there is interesting thing here called a stick, all right? And in this particular short video, we are talking about not just procrastination by itself, because this is human nature. We are talking about even though you do not want to procrastinate, if you are handed an assignment, that you do not know how to get started. And sometimes you just circle a while without knowing how to get help. That will be difficult. Now in this class, uh, I already particularly invite you to have one learning partner. 
So you at least have one person to talk to. And then in class, I try to sit you in table, which is not more than three or four, and you have another set of students to talk to. And then um, with an involvement like this, I highly encourage you to talk to one another, particularly during the process of your uh, recruiting your learning partner. And later on, you should know by the end of October, your pair will be merged with another pair of your choice, okay, to form a team, which is two pairs together. So you will have another chance to learn one another from this class. And when you have challenge to do that, you know that uh, how the other students feel about it. And when we come back to information literacy, why we have to talk about procrastination? Because this is something we want you to be aware of. If you are not aware of this tendency, it's very hard for you to get into your learning. We call it authentic learning. Because when you want to learn something, and if you rush a piece of homework, you cannot learn anything. So that's the reasons why, uh, before this lady asked me to give her a few days, in my experience about courses, uh, the reason why I did not give you the submission negative Wednesday, because I, when the submission date is given, you will ask, sir, isn't today or Friday the last day you will see that it's always a couple days old? My experience tells me that. And then I will look at, personally speaking as a teacher, who is going to submit on time? And who will submit the very last day? And who are those students in the training? And you know how to sort out students from a class like this. And then the next phase is to look at the quality of the work, all right? And in the second learning contract, we very much emphasize on your ability to manage your work within time given. Because in the real world, the work, or even in your other courses, if you cannot do that, that means is a signal that tells you you're not well set, okay? Because that is the training you need to enable yourself to keep track of. All right, so you know procrastination. So if you happen to procrastinate and you cannot manage it, what is going to happen? Watch. The key work is frustrations, right? What's frustrating about conducting research is when I type in keywords and I get a whole bunch of results, which sounds good, but so much of what's there is insanely irrelevant. Just getting started on a research assignment is the most difficult part of the research process for me. It's not knowing the right words to use when I search. Let's see, I'll comment on this, so now... What does someone else call it who may have published something about it? I always have trouble narrowing down a topic for the assignment. Finding statistics is hard. You're looking for some specific statistics, and you have to go through a million articles, and then you may never find something you can use. A lot of the time, it's a case of information overload. The more I know, the less I realize that I know. It can be kind of depressing. I never can find that perfect source, the one I know I really want, so I eventually settle. I say this isn't perfect, it's not what I really wanted to write about, but it will work, so I'll go with it. What's frustrating is when I look on the library shelves and I find some stuff, but it turns out to be 10 or 20 years old. Gee, that's hardly what can be called up to date. I can't use this stuff. It's not so much doing the research part of the assignment that's difficult, it's actually writing the paper. What's the research process supposed to be about anyway? Is there some right way I'm supposed to do it? I mean, I always feel like I've got to create some new system each time. The frustrations, the limitations, they remind me we're still living in the early days of the internet. There's information out there that should be readily accessible that we assume it is. And it is not, though. That's just the way it is. Today is 
a little different. I try to give you the information and the context first before I give you the time of discussion. Now, do you see the meaning of frustrations? It's not just that you cannot submit your homework. It is the difficulty behind your inability to submit your homework as expected. Because, for example, in our discussions with Python, we need you, as a learning partner, to help your partner to discuss the topic with your help of finding relevant resources to support his argument. Okay? And maybe you cannot find that perfect resource that your partner wants because you try to understand your partner's need, but normally it's, there is no exact match. All right? And so you do not know how to find the best resource to help him or her, and then you got frustrated. All right? So finally, you, you, you set it down to a second best, just like the, the, the discussions in the video set. And then the same might happen when your partner is going to help you. All right? So how are we going to resolve that? Well, someone will say, change the topic. No, I've chosen that topic. You cannot change it. Well, what if you change your interpretations of the topic? Oh, that's reasonable. If you interpret it the way it should be interpreted, and we have those resources with us, then the picture might be changed. So when we look at the discussion detail in particular, not just conversation, we talk about written records of your discussion. And based on the old observation, the I interpretation, and finally, the A, the lessons learned, we see how many rounds you've gone through that. And why do we want you to get engaged with that? Because that's the way how we train you up into thinking critical. Okay? With the evidence you can see when you look at the discussion detail. It's not just a note-taking process in your journal. Normally in your journal, when you read something, you take notes of what you read, you put down something. And that's in your observation. And then when you try to make sense of that something you put down, that is the beginning picture of your interpretation. But when you provide this interpretation to your learning partner to receive his or her feedback, you might have to change your interpretation. Because of what? Because you want good things, that is a good story to tell. Why do you need that? Because in your application, you need to share with your learning partner and all the whole class later what you have learned from that. And if you cannot make things connected, or if you cannot connect those pieces together, that is a difficulty. Okay? That's why you need to learn information literacy. You might have to apply the cycle of I recognize there is a need here, I need to access those information, I need to evaluate them, and I need to use them, and then I need to bring credit to the sources. And then when you change the topic, uh, different kinds of interpretation, I might have to do with the gators, and I need to find related information, I need to access those information, I need to evaluate them, I need to give credit, and then finally I need to use them. So do you see the point here? So frustrations comes into the process when you cannot do it. Alright? But how can you change it? How can you improve the process? Now, remember these soft video, very useful. You have to exercise your wisdom or experience to use some strategy. Strategies are very important. Strategies are what you can do to change the picture. If you want to know the truth, by the time you get to college, no one says to you, well, this is the official way to do research. Find information, you do this on this day, and at this point, then you have to come back to it later on. This saves time. You have to come up with some method to get through. I start by figuring out what the question is. What does the professor want? Then I look up sources, I take some notes, then I write the paper. I pretty much have it down. When I need some background and to get started on an assignment, Wikipedia is where I go. I might ask an instructor about going in a certain direction. For me, this keeps the paper from going off on a different tangent. 
Who knows? I'd leave a better grade, too. Depending on how big the paper is, it determines whether I need to go to the library or not. If I have too much, sure, I'll go to the library instead of relying on internet stuff. Writing on a different topic may mean pulling from some different sources. Sometimes I have life experiences or examples I want to leave into the paper, too. Something's really tough to answer, like trying to think of the word to use or how to narrow something down. I might ask someone for help. After I look at the course readings, then I simply look up the citations on JSTOR. It gets me through. I see research as involving the same steps, the same sources, each time. I always say, if it works, then why change it?
because I cannot tell you whether or not you should go there, for example. I cannot tell you that. This is not happening at the end of the circle. It's definitely we have a very rigorous peer review process. And when the people start all of this kind of process, that's why we get more stuff. And people are in view without any particular trigger. You can also be registered as a habitat human. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sometimes the page contains a lot of grammatical errors. So could you pass the microphone to one table of your choice? Let's pass the microphone, please. Okay. Here comes Kara. <laughs> hey, over there, over there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No! No, no, you choose because it's <laughs> Come on, 
on, this paper looks good enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so about the information literacy, we talked about the Wikipedia first. It is a search tool for us. Um, it's a search tool. Uh, as we have talked before, it was not that credible 10 years ago. But when it comes now, uh, it, um, the professor says that we can, uh, says that we can use it. Um, uh, when we use it, we found that uh, it is reliable sometimes, but when we just uh, click the links and when we find that there's some mistakes about the data, and it comes to the second uh, second topic about uh, frustration. It is also about the frustration. Uh, uh, my major is economics, so I, when I found the data, I found there are a lot of um, a lot of troubles like that. Uh, yes. The graphic, uh, the graphic techniques yes. uh, are always um, used incorrectly, like the mistakes of the data, and people didn't use the uh, didn't use the pro, uh, proper chart, proper charts. Okay, that's very good examples to point out the Wikipedia's weaknesses. Yes. And so, uh, if we, uh, if I want to get rid of my frustration, I need some uh, right strategies like. Uh, some uh, some skills um, yes. and I'm really not good at it. Maybe I think I should just collect some uh, experience from my um, from the classmates. And uh, as the video has said, we should know what the professor wants, and we should go into the right direction and plan yes. it. Um, and the last is about the procrastination. Uh, sometimes, like uh, what we have done, we only want to do things before the deadline because we are lazy. Sometimes we want to watch the TV, we want to do something else, and we know it was uh, it is wrong, but we can't we, we can't stop us. Maybe we should have a new way to um, manage our time and uh, care more about our self management. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, please choose a table of the choice. Uh, frustration. Yeah. Yeah. Website always. Yes. Yeah. Taking one of very important weaknesses of Wikipedia. Yes. Probably. Uh, <laughs> I think he's ready to say something. <laughs> oh yes. 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 You just leave it on the table and let him talk about it. Well, I think it uh, helps to understand if you feel frustrated, uh, something like this. I, I think it's very important now because the time constraint. Let me just uh, let me just uh, stop here for your sharing. Uh, I think it's very important you try to ask yourself this question. Um, today's topic is very important called information literacy because in this age of twenty first century, I believe. You cannot escape this because every day you're living in a digital world, you surf on the internet, even though you want to buy anything, you buy it online or you look it up. Uh, you must have some basic experience and then skills uh, and perspective to do this well in your life. But we are not living in the, in the last century before the 18th because at that time there is no internet. That's what we experience today. Now that we have all the convenience of the intellect and we try to use the best we could, we have to make sense of it and make use of it, okay? And if you want to make use of it without making sense of it, it's not possible, okay? It's a lot of cyberbullying today that children, even adults, they do not know how to deal with this kind of thing. They, they trust people online just as they trust the face to face world. And then they got hurt because of what? And this is what this course is all about. Study next week. We have one more class this week to talk about this topic. So next week, we're going to some very specific topic on web technology and mind. We're going to explore a little bit further because that's what web technology and life is all about. So let me just take attendance. Let me go. Of course.
The last one, you go home and watch it yourself. It's called finding the context. This is what you need, all right? Finding the context. All right. Let's see. Cook here, you hear? Thank you. Tiago. Thank you. Galilei. Thank you. Uh, I think you should be uh, encouraged to uh, get started. Juliana, get engaged, okay, in class. Get learned, you hear? Thank you. Your score will be Yeah, again, and again. Again, and again, thank you. Uh, K, and you hear K? All right, thank you. Uh, Jason, thank you. Um, Hita, thank you. Josh, thank you. Jongma, thank you. Um, Karen, Karen, thank you. Lis Lisandra, yes. Safiro, Safiro, not yet fit. Okay. Uh, Ladia, Ladia, thank you. Zihin, thank you. Uh, Yongling, yes. Wing, thank you, Wing. Mario, thank you. And then Joe, thank you. Jerry, thank you. Kenny, thank you, Kenny. Richard, thank you. And lastly, Davey, thank you very much. All right, thank you for spending time.
So that's it for today's CISG 114 section 2 Web Technology and Live on October the 8th, 2013. Alright?